Hello everyone, how are you today? I hope you're feeling as good as I am. And if not, I hope by the end of the video, you will. <laughs> All right, so today I want to share a little bit about Usui Reiki's history. Um, of course, I won't go into too much detail because this is something you learn when you take Reiki level, Reiki level one course. But I did want to clarify because um, in our videos as well, we talk a lot about the traditional Japanese style, the Western style. Uh, and so you may be wondering, what is this? Like, why is there a difference? What is the difference? Like, should I learn this style or should I learn that style, right? So I just wanted to clarify uh, that part. So when I talk about the history, it will make it clear. And also the three prominent personalities who contributed to Reiki becoming so popular, uh, to Reiki becoming what it is today. So the three people um, are first, of course, the founder, Mikao Usui Sensei. Um, and then uh, it's uh, Chujiro Hayashi Sensei. And then finally, it is Hawaiyo Takata Sensei. So these three uh, people are the ones who really made Reiki what it is today. And uh, they're the ones who made Reiki so popular in the world. So I will begin with Usui Sensei. Um, I'm not going to go get into his story, which I actually want to dedicate a separate video on about um, Usui Sensei, who he was and his story. So today we'll begin from the point where um, he obtained his enlightenment on Mount Kurama. So Mount Kurama is uh, a mountain in Kyoto. Uh, where Usui Sensei had gone seeking enlightenment and he fasted and on the 21st day is when he was struck by this enormous lightning and he attained his enlightenment and at the same time he uh, obtained the ability to heal and that's how then he began to spread Reiki and teach Reiki to people because he said I have this ability I'm able to teach and that happened in uh, the March of 1922. Uh, Usui Sensei actually just did Reiki, uh, taught Reiki, spread Reiki for only four years because um, in 1926, in the spring, he passed on. Like four years is such a short time. And Reiki became so popular, so popular in Japan in those four years. So, of course, uh, to formalize Reiki, the Gokai, uh, you know, only for today, do not anger, do not worry, be grateful, be sincere in work, be kind to others. He formalized this and he also uh, created the organization, the original organization called Usui Reiki Ryoho Gakkai. And then comes Hayashi Sensei. Hayashi Sensei learned from Usui Sensei and he received his Shihan certification in 1925. And um, he went on to open his own clinic called the Hayashi Reiki Kenkyu Kai. And um, he went on to, of course, you know, teach Reiki as well, practice Reiki as well. And Usui Sensei and Hayashi Sensei worked closely together um, in you know, bringing in new ways of doing Reiki. Usui Sensei encouraged Hayashi Sensei to bring in those new ideas and uh, you know, do Reiki in a different way than he was doing. So Hayashi Sensei had full blessings from Usui Sensei. And I think um, you know, um, Hayashi Sensei was a, a Navy doctor, so there was a little bit of an advantage uh, from that perspective uh, for like the physical healing aspect of it. Anyway, we believe uh, the self-healing positions that we follow today are the culmination of the method that Usi Sensei and Hayashi Sensei brought together. So, you know, you can understand this more in detail when you actually learn the course. Okay. All right. So, um, Reiki is still in Japan. Okay. Now, what happens is um, 
the Reiki's third period is where Takata Sensei comes in the picture. Uh, Takata Sensei travels to Japan in 1935 because she had to go through a surgery, so she traveled to Japan. But she found Reiki, she met Hayashi Sensei, she took treatment from Hayashi Sensei, and guess what? She did not have to go through the surgery. She was fine without having to do the surgery. So of course, she stayed on, um, learned from Hayashi Sensei for about a year, and uh, returned to Hawaii equipped with Reiki. And she opens a Reiki clinic in Hawaii. Oh, <laughs> Hawaii Sensei uh, was a second generation Japanese American from Hawaii. <laughs> All right, and then, yes, this is the critical part. Um, really thanks to Takata Sensei who learned Reiki and brought it back to Hawaii because in 1945 when the war happened, the Second World War, that's when Reiki died in Japan. Like any other part of the world, when a country is occupied, its original culture dies, goes underground, it's hidden. So that's what happened in Japan as well. And same thing with Reiki. The original uh, members of the Re uh, Usui Reiki Ryoho Gakkai, the members who practiced Reiki, went underground. Uh, they continued to practice, but nobody knew about it. The popular Reiki was then forgotten. But thankfully, again, for Takata Sensei, who had brought it to Hawaii. Um, she didn't uh, start to train Re Reiki Shihan right away, but uh, 1975, she began to do that and she trained 22 Reiki Shihan. A Reiki Shihan is Reiki Masters. So she, um, she trained 22 Reiki Masters. And again, thanks to, um, so this would be actually the next period of Reiki where uh, because of Takata Sensei, Reiki then moved on to the mainland United States from there to Canada um, and then to Europe and then to the rest of the world. It spread. It was an amazing modality where you can be healed. Majority of those 22 Reiki masters trained by Takata Sensei uh, formed a Reiki organization which again contributed, helped in spreading Reiki to the world. And then finally, Reiki returned to Japan from the West as the Western style Reiki. And when it returned to Japan, uh, because Reiki had become so popular, the prominent Reiki masters um, in the West wanted more information. They wanted to talk to uh, the people, the members of the original Usui Reiki Ryoho Gakkai. So slowly um, the members emerged and the dialogue happened. And when the dialogue happened, I think the realization came that there were some parts of Reiki that was forgotten um, for whatever reason. The reason doesn't matter. The fact is that the original idea of Usui Reiki uh, was to attain ultimate peace of mind. But when Western style Reiki came back to Japan, it came back as the healing modality where oh, you don't have to touch and you can heal. Wow, it's great for physical healing uh, kind of a thing. But of course, you know, uh, the people talked and realized. But the thing is, the original members of the original uh, Usuide Kiryoho Gakkai weren't as active as I think the world would have liked them to be. So, after a few years, um, the Reiki masters, the prominent Reiki masters in Japan decided that we better fill the shoe. And so they decided to form an organization where they said, we will disseminate the information, we will do the research, we will try to find out what was the original form, what was the original Usui Reiki. Uh, because 
all the textbooks and the documents that may have been available originally most of them had been destroyed in the earthquake and then of course in the war you know everything went underground so really the western world was really hungry for knowledge and so japan reiki association was born and uh, we decided that we will be the body where we are able to do the research and give out the information um, as much as possible and another mission of us was to revive um, reiki in japan we wanted to share reiki to the japanese people and say look this was your culture um, the world is appreciating let us also appreciate and today thanks to the efforts uh, reiki has slowly gained back its popularity and it is no longer something that people feel afraid of um, so i am really really happy about that so that is Usui Reiki history in a nutshell. <laughs> and uh, I hope to bring you some more videos, uh, some more detailed videos about Usui Sensei's uh, story, uh, perhaps a little bit about Hayashi Sensei and even Takata Sensei's story. Maybe you might be interested also in knowing a little bit about Kyoto and Kuramayama. Wouldn't it be lovely if we could travel to Kuramayama in Kyoto? Um, I hope so. Because it is a power spot. It is a spot where Usui Sensei received his enlightenment. So we've got to go there and find out what it feels for ourselves. So if you'd like some more information and you want to know more about perhaps how to travel, go there. Maybe that might be a good video too, right? Well, let me know in the comments. And please let me know if this was useful, um, what else you'd like to know. And we'll be back. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And the notification button as well, because that will let you know when our new videos are coming out. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Bye for now.